it happens all the time. You're writing a paper or you're texting someone and then you have to pause and ask yourself, should it be a fact or effect? A while or a while? Uninterested or disinterested? You know, I have been teaching for a very long time and sometimes I have to stop and do a quick Google search to double check. I think that happens even to the seasoned writers. You can't deny the fact that the English language has a lot of commonly confused words. They either look alike, sound alike, and worst of all, they sound and look alike, but they have different meanings. So today, I'm going to talk to you about some words or pair of words that regularly cause problems to a lot of students. Are you ready? Let's get started. Let's begin with the difference between very and too. Let's look at these two sentences. The coffee is very hot. The coffee is too hot. Can you tell the difference? Both very and too are adverbs, which come before the adjective hot. Very and too means extremely. The coffee is extremely hot. The word very emphasizes that there is a lot of the quality described. The coffee is very hot implies that the coffee is hot, but I can still drink it. It's manageable. Two, on the other hand, indicates that there's too much of a quality or characteristic. It implies a negative result. The coffee is too hot implies that because it's too hot, it's not possible for me to drink it. It's unmanageable and unacceptable. Let's look at other examples. The exam is very difficult, but I think I'll pass. The exam is too difficult. I think I failed. I'm very tired, but I can still go out with you. I'm too tired. I just want to sleep. The box is very big, but I can still pick it up. The box is too big. I can't pick it up. Moving on to bad and badly. First off, let's look at the part of speech that bad and badly represent. Bad is an adjective and badly is an adverb. As you may already know, adjectives describe a noun. They talk about states, feelings, and perceptions. She is beautiful. Adverbs, on the other hand, modifies a verb, an adjective, and sometimes another adverb. This is used to describe how you do something. She dances beautifully. How does she dance? She dances beautifully. Now that you know the grammatical characteristic of bad and badly, it'll be a lot easier for you to use them in a sentence. Let's look at these examples. Number one, he is a bad, badly singer. Since we are describing and telling our perception about the noun he, we think he's not a good singer, we need to use an adjective to describe him. We have to use bad. So the answer is, he is a bad singer. Number two, Mr. Grumpy Shin teaches bad badly. Here, we're modifying the verb teaches. We're answering the question, how? How does he teach? Well, badly. Mr. Grumpy Shin teaches badly. Number three. She was hurt bad badly in the accident. The answer is badly since we're again talking about how she was hurt. Badly. She was hurt badly in the accident. Number four, she was in a bad, badly accident. Here, the noun accident is being described. What's the quality of the accident? It's bad. So the answer is bad. She was in a bad accident. 
The use of bad and badly becomes confusing when we are using the sense verbs like taste, look, smell, feel, look, seem, and appear. Let's look at these examples. My dog smells bad. My dog smells badly. Both of these sentences are correct but have different meanings. In the first sentence, my dog smells bad, we're talking about the state of the smell of my dog. I'm describing his smell. It's bad. In the second sentence, my dog smells badly, we're talking about his ability to smell. His sense of smell is impaired, perhaps due to some injury, so my dog is unable to smell food. My dog smells badly. Next is every day versus every day. In spoken English, these words sound the same, but they are used and written differently. So, what's the difference between the two? Let's look at the first one that is written in two words. This is a phrase or an adverbial phrase which functions as an adverb. Again, an adverb tells us how something happens or the frequency of something. Every day means on all of the days, each day or daily. For example, I study every day. This means that I study on Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and even Sundays. Here, I am telling you how often I study. Every day. Some people study every morning, every Tuesday, but I study every day. Other examples are, I get up at 6 a.m. every day. I cook breakfast every day. Moving on to the other every day with one word. This word is an adjective. An adjective is used to describe something like a noun, just like what we talked about earlier. Every day as an adjective means ordinary, normal, or common. Someone can have an everyday shoes or an everyday bag. Let's look at this example. I wear my everyday clothing every day. This describes what kind of clothing you're wearing and this tells how often you wear them. See the difference? Next is a while versus a while. Despite the similar sound, these two words have different functions. They are different part of speech. Hence, they can't be used interchangeably. A while with a space is a noun phrase which means a short period of time. This noun phrase often comes after a preposition such as for or in. For example, she will be at home in a while. This means she is not at home, but she will be home after a short period of time. It's like saying, she will be at home in a short period of time. A while without a space, on the other hand, is an adverb. We already know what an adverb is, right? This adverb means for a short period of time and does not come after a preposition. For example, she will be at home a while. This means she is at home and she will stay home for a short period of time. Look at these two sentences. I told Lisa to rest a while. After a while, she started feeling better. Got it? Watch out for part two.